Hello again. Right, so in the last lesson we covered um, the interface, we covered navigating and we covered creating some primitives. So in this lesson we're going to be doing some move, rotate and scale. Okay, those are called transforms. Okay, um, we're also being We'll also cover um, how to change some parameters for the basic principles and we'll cover a little bit about modifiers, what they are and how to use them. Okay, so we'll start off with, um, again, I'm going to just talk through the keyboard shortcuts as I use them here. So I'm just going to go Alt-W to switch to one viewport. And then I'm going to hit P on the keyboard to switch to perspective. And I am going to use Alt and Middle Mouse button to just rotate my view around to something a little bit, something like this. Okay. So, just going to create a sphere here. So, just click on Sphere, click and drag. Okay. And then I'm going to right click because we're still in this object creation mode. You can see up here because it's blue. When I right click, that blue disappears and we're back. Um, over here now, All right? So, how do you actually move, rotate, and scale in 3ds Max? So, if we look up the top of the um, screen, we've got a key, we've got a toolbar here. Okay, um, this is the button for select and move, select and rotate, select and uniform scale. I'll just call them move, rotate, and scale. Okay, and you can see the little tooltip there. The keyboard shortcut is W for move, E for rotate, and I believe it defaults to R for scale. Um, okay, so let's just hit W. All right. So I'm going to talk a little bit about what popped up on the screen here, just here. This is called um, an axis tripod. Okay. Um, everything you see in 3ds max that's colored um r g and b those are three very important colors when it comes to 3d modeling and visual effects and even 2d animation um all sorts of computer graphics areas use these three colors so essentially anytime you see red we're working on the x-axis Green, we're working on the y-axis. Blue, we're working on the z-axis. And what these axes are, are directions in 3D space. So we've got this direction. I'm just clicking on the little move arrow here. And I'm clicking and dragging. Okay. If I come to here, you can see the little arrows highlighting. So I'm going to click and drag when they highlight. We can mo now move this direction here, Y positive and Y negative. Okay. Same for Z. Z negative, Z positive. And if you look down here at these X, Y and Z values here, you'll see why I'm saying positive and negative. Okay. We're on Y positive positive now, y negative, x negative, x positive. This is, this is because this is the origin here. Right where these lines cross, this would be 0, 0, 0 in x, y, z coordinates. Okay. And essentially z is up and down. You can think in z is up and down, but it's a little bit more difficult to think on um, y and X is either left or right because, you know, it depends what way you're looking at your scene. Okay, you can only say left or right when you're talking about it relative to something else. You know, okay. Um, so I'm just tumbling my view around with Alt and Middle Mouse button there. Okay, so you might have noticed these little um, squares between the two axes here. Okay, so if we take a look at what those are, they link two axes. So you can see when we hover over the z-axis, the z-axis gets lit and it locks the movement to that um, that axis. Okay. Similarly for y. But if we go between the two until that little box lights up, 
click and drag we're now locked to the Y and Z axis or the Y and Z plane you could call it okay same for here X and Z plane and X and Y plane okay let's just create a box and have a look so again it's got its own axis tripod here this one's got its own axis tripod okay and as we click between them the axis flips okay let's just create one more object here right now I'm gonna hit F4 to just turn on our edged faces here okay so that we can see the wireframe and the solid view okay so let's just take a look at uh, this panel up here the modify panel okay what do we see here well we've got a cylinder selected here and you can see we've got parameters that define what that cylinder is like so if I change its height okay change its radius change its height segments you can see what that does it adds this more high resolution wireframe to the model and you'll see how that works in just a second when we change sides if I you can see our, our model our cylinder gets more clearly defined with smoother sides when we adjust this parameter okay let's take a look at the parameters for sphere so when we click sphere all these parameters change to show you what defines the sphere and same again I can click and drag the radius and I can click and drag the number of segments this has got another parameter here called hemisphere so I can click and drag that and see what happens okay um, okay we've got slice as well so we can make a a pac-man wacka 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 <laughs> okay so you'll have to get used to that sort of stuff um, let's not worry too much about these okay so Again, if we go to box here, we look at the parameters here. The only parameters that define the size of the box are length, width, and height. So length, width, height. We also have segments here for our length, width, and height. And again, we'll ignore the these these two parameters here. Let's not worry too much about them now. Right. Okay, so that's parameters let's take a look at modifiers okay so I'm just going to delete by selecting an object and pressing delete on the keyboard now don't press backspace get into the habit of using the delete key DEL above the cursor keys okay don't use backspace because that does something um, different although sometimes it will delete sometimes it won't but let's just hit the delete key and the delete key and let's just move this over to the center okay so modifiers what what are they well they are things you can add to an object which modify it in some particular way so if we take a look over here we've got a modifier list now um, I'm using 3ds max 2023 you might be starting off in 2024 so this might look very slightly different but uh, essentially it just should should be the same so if I click modifier list and the way I always demonstrate this is with a bend modifier okay so you can see when we add a bend modifier it appears above this which is our base object which is a cylinder okay and you can see now the parameters are for the bend if I come back to cylinder the parameters change back to cylinder if we come up to bend here we go so just going to click and drag on angle okay and we can click and drag on rotation here as well 
Okay, let's just take a look around. Okay, we can do it in different axes as well. It doesn't look much like a bend, really. Okay, you can create some uh, pretty messed up geometry using these modifiers, so don't worry about it. Just um, we'll stick to the z-axis for now. Okay. All right. So let's add another modifier on top of this. And this time I'm going to add twist. Okay. Now I'm just going to come down to our cylinder here and give it more resolution so that we can see this a bit better. Okay. Here we go. Quite high resolution cylinder with a bend and then a twist. Okay, so there's an order in which these things are processed by the computer. It looks at the cylinder, then it bends it, then it twists it. Okay, so let's come back to twist and just give it some angle here. And you can see it's starting to twist it. I can take it the other direction as well. Okay. Now, let's turn that up to about there. Now, I want to show you what happens, um, or actually I want to show you how the order of these is very important. Okay, so we've got, by the way, you can turn each modifier on and off with the little eyeball symbol here. Okay, let's see what happens if we reorder these modifiers. If I click on twist and drag it down below bend, we can't, we can't put it below the base object. Okay, but we can put it below the bend. Let's just click and drag. And now we have something completely different. If I turn off the bend modifier, you can see with the segments here, they're twisting round. If I adjust the twist, you'll see it here. So, and then we bend it. So we've created a completely different object just with the order of these okay um let's just take a look at a few more here let's create a geosphere okay and this time i'm going to add a noise modifier okay and let's give it some strength let's say 10 and i'm using tab to switch between um, the strength parameters here, tab, 10, tab, and you can use shift tab to move back through the parameters and tab to move forward. Okay, so here's our noise modifier on a geosphere. Um, noise in computer graphics means something different to noise in um, audio. Okay, noise is like randomness. Okay, let's turn on, or let's take our scale right down here. You can see we just completely mess up our model. But that's fine, because we can get it back. Um, now, I think 10, 10, and 10 here might have been a bit strong, so I'm going to go 1, 1, 1. And using shift tab, I'm going to go back to scale and take it down so that we can see. I'll maybe turn on fractal. And we get something a little bit more random. Let's take our segments down to about 2. And take our noise. Um, let's see. Somewhere like there. Now, let's just turn it green and straighten this up a little. Turn it brown. I'm going to move this into position and we have a very basic tree. We could even call it a low poly tree if we take our segments right down at our sides do something like this okay we probably don't need twist so i'm just going to right click and go delete uh, 
um, this will delete the modifier from this area here. This is called the stack because basically things are stacked on top of each other. So I'm just going to delete that. Okay, you can see you can see it through here as well. I'm going to add instead of the t twist, I'm going to add a taper, and so that we have a nice. If I switch to wireframe using F3, we've got a nice um, tapered tree trunk. Very, very basic low poly tree. Okay, so that was um, moving. Okay, let's go on to the other two transforms now that I've got, got this actually made. Okay, so I'm going to go here. And this time, instead of moving, I'm going to come up and we'll take a look at s s select and rotate which is E in the keyboard so this time our axis tripod changes to something slightly different um, you can see we've got a red axis a, a green axis which is quite hard to see against the green background and a blue axis and if we hover over them and click and drag you can see we turn it in the highlighted direction Okay, and again, if you look down here, this is now given us our angle. Okay, and if we come in between these, it's kind of a freeform rotation. You can just click and drag here. Okay, now um, the next one we're going to take a look at is the scale okay which is r and again we get a different axis here different axis tripod okay um so this time if i come to y and click we can scale our object okay scale it in the x axis z axis um, if we come to here we're scaling it in two axes Okay, the two that are linked together, and if we go to the middle, that's called a uniform scale because it does all three axes. So the object has the same um, relative dimensions. Okay, obviously it's getting bigger and smaller, but um, in proportions for the X, Y, and Z, they stay the same with a uniform scale. Okay, that's a messed up low poly tree now. Oh, I'm not worry too much about it. Um, one thing, a, f a few, well, a few things here that I want to just warn you about. It's a really bad idea to use this sort of scale until you know what you're doing. Okay, so stick to a uniform scale. Okay, don't use these when you're modeling. Okay, and we'll get to why that is in a future lesson, but in a nutshell. What it does is screws your model up for animation. Okay, now if you're on the um, product design course or digital design course, this won't matter because you won't be doing any animation. But for animation students, that is a big no no doing that. Okay, all right, until you know what you're doing. Okay, um, so a few things I want to. Um, make you think about here. So let's just take a sphere and let's just make it perfectly round. Okay, and let's give it a radius of one meter. Okay, now what I'm going to do is make a, a copy of this. Now you can't do copy and paste in 3ds max what you do is clone instead so i'm holding down shift and i'm going to click on the y-axis and drag this and it leaves behind um a copy of itself and i'm just going to choose copy here we'll get to this in a future lesson what these are but just make sure we're on copy for now okay now if i scale sorry what i did there is bring up what's called the quad menus okay so you can select an object and right click 
can get your move rotating scale from here along with a lot of other options as well okay um, the reason it's called a quad menu is because sometimes it'll pop up four sections here okay what I'm gonna do is just scale this up a bit and the reason I'm doing this is because I want to show you something you would think when we select this sphere it's got a radius of one okay um, have a guess at what the radius of this sphere is now you might say two two and a half or three let's select it no it's still one okay and the reason for that is that scale is independent of these parameters here okay um, so I could scale this down to a little tiny point its radius will still be one but its scale is way down okay you can see its scale is at three okay okay so there we go so that is um, move rotate and scale a um, little bit on parameters all the different parameters we have here and also a little bit on modifiers okay thank you